Welcome to Ask a Deer Processor. Today we ask, hey Chuck, what equipment do I need? Just some basic tools that you may wish to have for processing a deer is we'll start off with a gambrel. It's oftentimes easiest to um, work on that deer if it's hanging up uh, overhead and a gambrel will allow you to fasten both hind legs uh, to the something overhead for you to hang that deer. You'll need an assortment of knives, uh, some basic uh, knives to use for skinning and for cutting, you know, one or two, two or three knives, that's, that's plenty. Uh, you'll need to have your knife sharpened, and in order to keep it sharp, you'll need a butcher steel to straighten the edge in case you hit bone or something else that's gonna dull that edge. The way that we're going to show you to process this deer is going to allow gravity to help you. And in order for you to process it the way that we're going to show you today, a boning hook will be immensely valuable, and we'll show you that during the, the process. Some latex or nitrile gloves, some people like to use those so that they can keep their hands clean. However, the thing that you have to be aware of is that oftentimes when people are using these, these gloves, they forget about what type of contamination there may be on their hand. And so if you have these gloves on and you get your hands soiled, make sure that you've got a source, some way to, to wash your hands even with the gloves on because any contamination you get on those gloves, you're going to get on the meat unless you remove that. You'll need a couple of pans to put your, your cuts of meat in from the loin, the leg, the shoulder, and then also you'll need a tub to, to put any items that are not cuts of meat. Uh, the things that are gonna be used for sausage or stew meat. You'll need some type of a cutting surface in order to cut that your deer on. You know, we've got a, a, a butcher shop here, so we've got you know, nice cutting tables with a cutting surface, but any type of cutting surface that you'd use in your kitchen, a, a nice sized um, butcher block, and even if you go to Sam's or Costco and get those plastic tables that often people use for the folding tables for you know, when they have company over that uh, you know, to expand their space, those are plastic materials can often be used as a cutting surface also. And then you'll need something to put your items that are not edible, uh, you know, like a waste bin to put your bones, any fat or any contamination that you're gonna trim from that carcass. One other item that you may choose to use when you are processing your venison is a safety glove. I have a few options here. This particular glove is um, a kind of a cotton and nylon type material with a cut resistant surface. This is good for any type of slashing cut that you make, but not something where you actually would be, you know, poking. You know, it, it does, it's better than nothing, but it's not as good as what a metal mesh safety glove are. This will protect you from accidentally cutting your finger or poking with your knife. You say, well, these are very expensive. Well, if you're processing this deer for your, yourself, you're probably not doing this job every day and you're gonna be somewhat awkward and your likelihood of cutting yourself is greater. Even us as professionals, we always use safety gloves when we are cutting any kind of meat, just for personal protection. You know, what's it cost to go to a, the emergency room? You know, $250 if you gotta go get stitches. You know, these gloves are expensive, but for something in the $70 to $100 range, you're gonna be protected against cutting yourself with your knives. These gloves are made to be loose, such that when you cut it at it with a knife, that those links are not going to be compromised. You can wear the glove just like it is, or you can put a nitrile or latex glove over the top. By having this glove over the top of your metal mesh glove, it's going to keep that metal mesh from getting soiled when you're cutting up that deer and any contamination, you can easily wash that, that glove off without getting your chain mail glove all messy. And also, that way it kind of keeps that floppy, loose glove kind of intact so that you're not hitting that floppy glove with your, with your knife. You can wear the, a glove underneath the chain mail glove. If you choose, it may be more comfortable. Some people find the chain mail not comfortable against their skin. Other types of gloves, this is a safety glove which also has some protection for your forearm. Because when you're cutting, your knife may 
may slip and you may poke into your, your wrist. There again, it's just more protection for your personal protection. Thanks again to Riverbend Wild Game and Sausage Company. You can learn more about Illinois Learn to Hunt at learntohuntil.com.